Hi there, I'm Alex Kirby, I'm a psychologist. I'm also the executive director of Montford Hall. Uh, and this is the third in our series on uh, videos on substance abuse in the adolescent brain. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing uh, neuroanatomy or brain anatomy uh, as it relates to addiction in general and in with regard to adolescents specifically. There, we have what is called a triune brain, or three as in tri, three part brain, uh, starting with a hind brain down here towards the brain stem responsible for things like respiration, heart rate, uh, keeping our body the right temperature, a variety of very basic physiological processes that help us survive. So that's the hind brain. Um, the next part of our brain is called the midbrain. The midbrain is responsible for rewarding us. It's responsible for a lot of things actually, but mo primarily it serves the purpose of rewarding us when we do things that help us survive as a species. So that includes things like running from danger, that includes procreation or having sex. Uh, that includes eating. Uh, we get reinforcement when we eat. Tastes good, eat more. We need to eat, drink water. Tastes good, drink more. So it does things, it rewards us by giving us a, a, a subtle, in some cases profound, in other cases, sense of pleasure when we do things that are good for our survival. The, the third part of our brain is our, and, and I want to go back actually, the midbrain is also the go part of the brain, I mean, you'll refer to as go, like we do things, we go and do things because it's good for us. But sometimes if we do some of those things that we're compelled to do too much, sex for example, indiscriminately or what have you, I mean, we can obviously see the problems that are created there. So uh, over time we've developed the capacities to stop, and the stop part of our brain is the forebrain. That's where we uh, build reasons why we're not going to do something uh, that we've done that's got us in trouble. If we've eaten too much, or we've had too much sex, or we've done various things, we, the rationale for not doing it and the ways to help us avoid doing it are all things that are formulated here in the forebrain. Now again, the forebrain does all kinds of things, tremendous uh, I mean, we're talking trillions and trillions of neural connections in our brain, so you can imagine all the variations. But uh, roughly speaking, we have a hind brain, primitive stuff, midbrain, how to help us survive, do things that help us survive. Forebrain stops us and helps us plan, execute, and put in check some of our impulses. Um, if you eat a hamburger and it tastes good, uh, you will get rewarded with dopamine. Your midbrain will release very subtly, but it'll compel you to take the next bite, okay? Um, if you're trying to lose weight and a hamburger is not on your diet, your forebrain will say, stop eating that hamburger. I have a plan to lose weight that does not include hamburgers. But the midbrain is saying, eat it, take another bite. Um, so we have this sort of tension built into our brain as, as we are as a species that helps us do things to help us survive and yet stop us from getting ourselves in trouble. Um, and plan and execute just so we can avoid getting in trouble. Now, in addiction, now importantly, in an adolescent, uh, the forebrain is not as fully developed. This doesn't stop developing into, uh, until our 20s, and it's believed that that plays a role in adolescent susceptibility to addiction. Um, and also, as a species, at that age, they are compelled to take risks, they're compelled to procreate, so there's also some indication that the midbrain is responsible for more go-like behavior, greater risk-taking at that age. So there's tremendous susceptibility among adolescents to addiction because that balance between the, four, the stop part of our brain and the go part of our brain can get, it's, it's not the same as it will be later on in our lives. So it's important that we understand those neurological structures as we talk about addiction. And in addiction, when the disease becomes active, the problem exists in the midbrain uh, such that the forebrain doesn't have the control or we are not able to stop the way we would normally be able to stop. So I'll discuss what that actually, what actually occurs in the midbrain um, when addiction starts to become active, and I hope you'll join us for that video.